All right, at 7 o'clock, we'll call the regular village board meeting to order. If everyone would rise to say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That corporate, please call a roll. All right, come here. Jones. March. Here. Parker. Here. Ham. Here. Out. Here. A couple of corrections to the minutes of the January 13th, 2020 regular village board meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes as presented? If not, a motion to accept as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Bowden, seconded by Trustee Morocco. Bowden? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Morocco? Yes. Bowden? Yes. March? Yes. Parker? Yes. Ham? Yes. Accounts payable and payroll, payroll pay period ending 11 11 19, 1 11 19, well, actually 1 11 20. Yes, I'm so sorry. That's okay. 1, 1 11 20 in the amount of 50,217.26. Uh, general fund 83,948.87, giving a total of all funds 83,948.87. Are there any questions on any of the bills or the payroll? If not, a motion to pay the bills and the payroll. Motion. Second? Second. Motion by Trustee Parker, seconded by Trustee Hand. Parker? Yes. Ham? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Marepka? Yes. March? Yes. Item four, public comment and or questions on and or questions on any non-agenda item. Hi, my name is Daniel Jimmy Jan, and I live at 444 South 2nd Street. Purchased the house about 15, 16 years ago. Well, I noticed about a year after I purchased the house that I go through extreme flooding. It's not a flood pain. I had that check before I purchased the home, nor was I disclosed of this matter. Through all the administrations in the last 15 years, phone calls to the village, it was like I was swept under the rug until I met Mrs. Amy. She is so far the only person in 15 years to start help. However, I just got an email from her on last Friday, I believe, or at least that's what I opened it, asking if I got in touch with the farmer behind me or the landowner. No, I can't, because in his eyes, it's the village's problem. In your eyes, it's his problem. Whose problem is it? while I'm flooding two to three feet of water on every rain. My house is going to get condemned. Whose problem is it? Why is it that I have to obtain a lawyer, at the <clears throat> engineers and everything else? I shouldn't even be in this problem. If that's the case and the village deems it the landowner or the farmer's problem, what is the village exactly going to do to expedite like this so I'm not sure? <coughs> what about all the damage all the way down to Route 50? My neighbor's driveway is destroyed. My sump pump hasn't shut off. It was off three times, three weeks last year. Three weeks. It runs continuously 24-7, nonstop. This last heavy rainfall, I had to obtain a two, or I'm sorry, three-inch trash pump to pump out three feet of water. Do you drive down the block right now? Still rolling water. This is severe. Other people are affected. People stop. School buses stop. What's going on? Aqua's been in my house numerous of times thinking I had a water service break. It's that bad. What is the village planning to do since everyone's standing in a circle pointing fingers? The way I'm looking at it is it's a triangle. I'm pointing fingers at the landowner and the village, while the village and the landowners are pointing fingers at each other. Okay. If the village is 100%, it's the landowner's problem. Why is the village asking me an email, have I been in contact with the landowner? Well, if you guys are diligently working together, you wouldn't have to ask me that. It sounds like no one's working together. How are we going to fix a problem when no one's working together? I spoke to Bob, the, the village guy. I don't know his name. The director. The director, yes. Awesome dude. <clears throat> Amy's been awesome. They've been in contact with ComEd and the railroad tracks, whatever. Things are starting to happen. I understand that things take time. 
but the severity of it is within since last winter, the flooding is so bad that almost every rain I got to. Luckily, I I do what I do for a living. I bring home trash pumps. A normal person be three hundred bucks a day to rent that. I have to pump out three feet overnight and hopefully sump pumps take over. In 15 years, I went through $4,000 worth of sump pumps. This summer, pulled a permit, put a fence in. Took me almost three months to put it in because my yard's underwater. It's progressively getting worse, something's changed. The street in front of my house is newer. Not brand new, it's newer. It's buckling. Due to a farmer's pile or whatever, water's flowing through it. Now, it, now it's not. It's all going into my house. What, if everyone's working together, what exactly is going to be done for a short-term solution so I'm not dealing with three feet of water every time it rains? And if everyone's working together, what is the village, and it, it, say it is Craig Clark's fault and the farmer. What is the village going to do to expedite it so he has to do something? Because under my eyes, there's property in the hand. It's your fault, it's the United's fault, it's everybody's fault except for him. He's and so as, as you said, you've been talking to Amy and Amy and yeah, I have awesome. been talking quite a bit about it. And we've had numerous conversations about this. And in fact, we had a, a discussion about this very topic this morning. So maybe you can kind of fill the board in on exactly where we're at right now on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, sorry to cut you off, Dr. Mr. Cross, but it's... It, it, I, understand, it, it, I understand your frustration. I, I really do. We're the 27th day into the January, and my pump hasn't shut off since last September. That's something wrong. That's severe. Now the next step is all the damage that's going on. Now keep in mind, in the end of years past, I was able to go down in my crawl space one time, bleach everything, clean it. Well, when a house is sitting with three feet of foot of water or six inches of water for a course of a year, bad things are just happening. You know, if this keeps up for another year, my house is most likely going to get condemned yeah. due to mold. So let me let me have Amy address this, so she can just kind of fill the board in on where we're at right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no short-term solution. Okay. I, I mean, that's just the bottom line. Like you said, it's severe. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Moving forward, in, what in is that, the village that, planning on to do with the, uh, the land order? What, what has the village there? done, I guess, is, 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 is where we're at. And like I said, there's no short-term solution. I've been trying to work on this since you first called me, mm -hmm. since I was here probably a month, and I haven't stopped working on it. Oh. Um, you know, we get ice dams down South 2nd Street because the water, it looks like a main break. Um, it, it'd be better if I, I, sh I, I think I should maybe show some of you. Uh, can, can I show them? If I pull up a phone, can I show them a picture of the rainfall in September? I don't think that would do it justice to show that, show them, show, show them on, on the phone. But just to describe it a little bit, it, it, a swale was, was filled in by the Canadian National Railroad. Um, and then, and so we have subsurface issues and we have surface issues with, with the flow of the water coming down. And it, it's, we think there's a broken drain tile involved, that's the subsurface water. Um, and we have um, the surface water. And the, because of what was filled in with the, um, the Canadian National Railroad with some debris, um, you know, and, and, and like Dan says, it's been going on for so many years that the water has just changed from its natural flow and then it's it's going through Mr. Clark's property and... Which is the farm field. The farm field behind their houses. Um, so it flows in the wrong direction from its natural flow. No. Um, it goes through the farm field and then for some reason it's gravitating towards just those two houses at the corner of Dan's, and then the, and another house, 445, 444 and 445, South 2nd Street, and it's, it just gravitates towards those two houses. Um, he pumps it out, goes on to South 2nd Street, it goes 
south towards um, Route 50, and it goes into the ditch there. So, you know, we don't know why. We've then, um, well, we've been in contact with ComEd. They have been, we've been in contact with the Canadian National to remove the debris. Um, they're not cooperative, so we reached out to, to ComEd because they put the debris in ComEd's right of way, which is where the swale is. Um, so we reached out to them. They've been extremely cooperative. They want to try to solve this problem comprehensively, which means they want to uh, redig that swale so that the water will go into its natural flow pattern and go because it, it's it's the shortest distance for the water to go back down to 50 and um, on that side of the street or on <laughs> behind the apartments all the way down to 50 instead of way back around and through the neighborhood. Um, so unfortunately, um, we've reached out to the county as well, and they would consider that a whole new drainage project and consider that new water because it's been going in the wrong direction for so long. <coughs> so we would have to do a whole study, which would be probably upwards of $50,000, um, because we would have to tie into the county storm system to, to put that water um, back to its normal flow and um, perhaps upsized pipes. We'd have to get a permit from the county um, to do that. So ComEd um, probably won't be able to recut that drain in. That's just the surface water issue. If we address the subsurface issue, there's a tile broken somewhere that needs to be fixed so that there's not so much water going underground and hitting his basement. That tile could be anywhere. We have no idea. <coughs> and the only way to find out is do a drain tile survey. We think it's on the farm field. We're not sure. ComEd has agreed. We, we have um, commissioned a, um, a, a drain tile study just on the farm field because we, we have to keep mm -hmm. the parameters of that <laughs> contained. Mm -hmm. Okay? Which so uh, we don't own that property. We have to get permission from the owner. ComEd, again, has been very cooperative mm -hmm. with us. They don't have to be, no, they but don't. they have been mm -hmm. um, because the village got involved. Um, they agreed to pay half of a drain tile survey, mm -hmm. and uh, the village um, is going to contribute to that, and we've asked Mr. Clark to contribute to that also. And, and I we, know you don't have to answer this, because every time I talk to Greg, he's always very offensive. Like he's always on defense. Mm -hmm. It is. He can never get a meeting with Amy. He, he, he <laughs> tells me, and this, um, and I'm. Well, I'm that's gonna, not true. I know this. You know, I'm. Well, I don't know this, but. Uh, I'm very accessible. But I can never get a meeting with the Amy, the new village manager. This and the other. You know, we're in a town with six thousand people, and I can go to the city of Chicago and arrange a meeting faster. Theoretically, that's the theory I was going by. It's a small town feel. I'm from the city, and when something arises like this, engineers are without out there within a couple of days. But they have way more money, way more people, the whole nine yards, and they're more sewers. I understand that this is going to take time, but however, like I stressed last winter, now you guys got to keep in mind when this is going on in the winter time. I have police knocking on my door at one, two o'clock in the morning, asking me to unplug my pumps. You know, so there's a lot of things going on in between all this, little things. I have neighbors going down a whole block. What are you going to do about this? I called the village. I called Greg Clark. Nothing. I don't know what to tell you. People stop. Have you dug huh? on your property to see if you can find a drain tile that's been broken? No. Have you dug anywhere around your foundation? To no, see because I'm, I'm afraid. You... Oh, I had drain tile for around my footing for they keep water away from my house. It's useless because I have so much water coming to my house on top of the ground and out of the ground. Well, so if, we, if, if there's a requirement for them to come on your property to see if there's a drain tile on your property. I offered it I offered it to the village and Greg Clark 
all last summer when my fence was down and it was wide open lane. I'm just saying there might be some thing you might have to contribute if there's a broken tree top on your property. I, well, I don't believe it's on my property because it's... Well, we won't know unless you dig, is what I'm saying. Where do you propose I dig? I, I'm saying that that would be up to you. Okay. But if, regardless, regardless, we're going to move forward, yeah. you know, with this drain tile study mm -hmm. on that farm field. As long as we can get permission right. from Mr. Clark, we've been in touch with them. Yes, we've had a meeting we've, with them. We've we've been open communication with okay. them. Okay. He's sometimes difficult to get to respond. So it's not that he's being ignored by us. No. You know, we're, and this is where communication yeah. is key. Um, the neighbor next door that she spoke about, it, what is that, four or five five Dale Batterman. I asked, that? have you heard? He's here. Dale's here. I asked, have you heard from anything from the village? The last I would, and I'm going to quote him. I called or tried to arrange meetings. No one's have ever called him back in a year. A year. The only reason I got an email from you, I'm assuming, is because I called Mr. Cross at his place of business. That's the only reason why I'm assuming that I got an email response, is because I had to call the mayor at his place of business. But Amy's been talking to you. I don't, I got an email I got that before that was September 13th of saying that Greg Clark asked about drain tile. That was it. It was just a heads up. I even said thank you for a heads up. But I know that it's this has been an ongoing conversation. It's been an ongoing process. I know that because Amy and I have had conversations <coughs> about this all fall and throughout this winter, working with the C, you know, trying to work with the CN, trying to work with ComEd. <coughs> Trying to work with Mr. Clark, trying to bring all of these pieces together. But how is every? If, but if everyone isn't on the same page, how are you working together? Like when I go to work and I have to work with three different other construction guys and crews, we do this little thing like we do here. We have a meeting and we go address everything. If we try talking to each other over the phone here and there, you're not going to get anywhere because it gets put on the back page, back burner, and that's it. And that's exactly what happens. So if everyone's diligently working together, how many meetings were actually together with everyone involved in one meeting? How has that happened yet? No, I don't. No, it hasn't happened. We haven't had the CN and ComEd in the same room. Yeah, but that, that it sounds happened. like ComEd is really they are. compliant. That's they awesome. Are. CN, everyone here knows that CN's exactly. Good. Forget about it. So we can almost exclude CN. You know, it's most likely nothing's going to happen with CN. ComEd's being awesome, Amy's being awesome, just by even calling ComEd and doing, I'm not complaining about her whatsoever. So all I want you to, I mean, all I can tell you is that we're not ignoring you, we're working, diligently working mm -hmm. on trying to figure out an answer to this problem. It's not a simple answer, mm -hmm. it's not going to be an inexpensive answer. Um, I think if we can find a tile and get a tile repaired, I think it's going to help a lot and I think if we can get somehow work through this whole swale issue and now the county's kind of throwing a wrench at us which is just I think that happened today mm -hmm. correct yeah with we our, just had a meeting, with, had a meeting with the county today yeah. about this whole drainage and now that's they're kind of throwing a wrench in. and, and gotcha. let's be clear here I mean I'm not going to call you every day that I have a meeting with somebody about this project you are more than free to call me and check in with me. Yeah, but, uh, I, 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 I can't, I can't call you every time I, I work on this project. And I am working on this very hard. And, and I appreciate that. But uh, communication is key. When yeah, I absolutely. And when I check in with me any time that you want to. And, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. But I, I do have a lot of other projects that I'm working on. Under understood. But what about, well, I'll let Dale speak on behalf of himself. But um, thanks for your if time. If I missed your call, Dale, and I didn't call you back, I apologize. I Stop it. I haven't heard anybody in 15 years. I never, I <laughs> never <laughs> got a message I wasn't from working so, for 15 I mean, years ago. I've been to three. Should I speak? If you, if you want to, sure. Just give your name for the official. Sure. Dale Batterman. I'm at 448 South 2nd. I'm Dan's neighbor. I moved in there 15 years ago, and this has been a problem for probably 15 to 30 years. And not everything that's been said tonight is correct. I've been to three different village administrators over the last 15 years. This was so bad 15 years ago 
water come across that field, blew out my basement window, fills up my basement, six feet of water in a heartbeat. The, the, I'm the one that got ComEd involved. Uh, ComEd hired an engineer to look at this, and I'm assuming you have that report because it was emailed to me and to the village in the same CC copy. Their, their results from that engineering report where this is the natural flow of water, and essentially what has happened here is the village of Piatone has allowed a subdivision and all that development in that corner of town, because this affects that entire area, has been allowed to be built with no regard to any drainage, storm sewer, or water runoff. And that was back in the early 70s, correct? 70s, 80s. Yeah, I think it was and then we compound that with what's happened with ComEd's property back there and, and <coughs> and that there's been no maintenance back there. And as far as the farm tiles, that's almost a beating a dead horse. They're over 100 years old. That was all farm ground back around the turn of the century. And all that drained down to Black Walnut Creek across 50 and down through there. Trying to find them and repair them at this point, I, I don't know that it would be any good. But you can't stop the flow of water that naturally goes out to Black Walnut Creek. So somehow we got to figure out how to get it back going to there and not through our houses. I've, my driveway's ruined. Dan and I's fence have rotted out. Um, this has been going on for a long time. That's, you see all that ice on the corner of Piatone, Wilmington, and Route 50, and they got to chip out all the time? That's from my driveway. That flows through my yard, down the road, affects everybody down the block. I'm surprised there's actually not more people here from, from the neighborhood. Right, and what, what, are you, what are you suggesting? Well, I said a long time ago that we all get together on the same page, because I can't mm -hmm. completely blame Greg Clark either. He's got a piece of farm ground there, and the, the engineer's report from ComEd showed that that was the natural flow of water back prior to that all being developed. Then it got developed, and the natural flow of water is going to continue to try and go back to the same existing path. So that was never rerouted. And it was, and it was, and it's, and so I, I don't What think, is the natural flow of the water then? Right through our here. houses. It, the, that's what ComEd's engineer went back in history and found the natural flow. Because there's that, you got Second Street and you got a, a hill and the swale that goes across that field. That swale is a natural flow of water that goes right towards our houses. About three or four houses right, right there. So we put houses right in the middle of that. How to fix that? I, you know, you're going to have to put a storm sewer or something in to get some of that. You got to. There's going to be multiple fixes, and, and there's multiple problems here. You know, e e even something as simple as down on the corner of Route 50 and Second Street, all that water runs into Route 50 is, is pointless. Get a backhoe out there, in about 20 minutes, you could dig where the, the the gutter drains into the ditch. I know that's partly the state. But they well, all, all the got to work together. Yes, that's, that's all the state. Well, and somebody went and hand dug a little a little trench in there already. Yeah. It helped a little bit, but it, it just it flows so out. fast by there. It just <laughs> it just goes right around the the ditch and into the road. You know, yeah. at some point it becomes a safety issue. <clears throat> Who's going to get sued when there's an accident and six inches of ice on that corner? Mm -hmm. I think this is a little more serious than than you know. We've been dragging this out for. Years, three different village administrators. I've been to personally. Do you have any historical maps that that was their original flow of water? Uh, you can pretty much go on the county and look at uh, uh, on their website. You can go go back different years and take a look at that. I probably got more information than anybody in the room on this whole project. I've got a file folder that thick. I'm the one. I've, I've contacted CN. I'm the one that got ComEd involved. Uh, I've I've been met with Greg Clark numerous times. I've been to the village numerous times, and the village is the only one that has never, ever, in 15 years, ever called me back or got in contact with me. Three different administrators. I always get appeased, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. And then, here we are. And I know you're working on it. <coughs> and you, I said, and this, this first came to my attention this year, I never realized. I didn't, I didn't think I needed to come to a village meeting after going to the, you know, to the office here and pointing this out. 
because it's pretty obvious driving down there when you get more than a couple inches of rain when the field floods. We, we've put some berms around so it quits blowing through my garage and through my deck and through my windows, but it's still got a flow. You can't stop the natural flow of water. That's, the, that's its law. So it is going to be tricky to fix, but there's, there's some things we can't do. But we all need to sit down. Well, yeah, I think we can set up something where we can do that. Okay. No, I think it'd be easier than trying to stand here at this meeting. I mean, I would be no, happy. No, we can't fix it here. No, exactly. I mean, I, I think we've got a little bit of, we have a plan, at least we have a, a movement forward that we've been working on, that Amy's been working on the last several months. I think we kind of need to see where that kind of falls here in the next few yeah, weeks. Yeah, I have no idea what you all are working right. on. Right. Again, I, I have never gotten a phone call from you. I've never had a conversation with I, you. I didn't think I needed to call you. No, I but I, again, I don't know, you know what administrator you've talked to. This Amy's the, the third administrator the village has ever had. So well, the last maybe, 15 years, there, there's been three then. No, there was, there was George Obviously Gray, good. there was George Gray, and then there was Greg Spathis, and then there was Amy. Those are the only administrators we've ever had in the village. Well, I've been to the village three times in 15 years. Okay. Again. And, and this is obviously a problem before I ever moved here. I, I didn't realize it was that big a problem until after a year or two of being in there and seeing what was going on. Well, we are definitely aware of it, and we're definitely working on it. Well, we would like to be kept in the loop a little bit here. Well, as Amy said, please feel free to call her, you know, check in with her. But if we get to a point where we can give a, a little more of a thorough update, we can reach out to you and uh, to Mr. Yes, thank you. You know, a you lot, know, a lot of down the block, uh, you know, we work construction, we work uh, farm history, we understand the, the, the farm tiles. We have a pretty good idea where some of these are. Um, other than <coughs> digging them up and blocking them off, I don't know how you're ever going to get the flow because it flows all the way under 2nd Street. In fact, you can look at the end of my driveway and pretty much follow it across the road. The road is cracked, and the road is actually, this winter, just started to, to, to cave in a little bit. It hits the, when it hits the curb across the street from my house, there's so much pressure on them old farm tiles, it bubbles up along the curb, just out of the ground, for days after a rain. And then I'm sure those old tiles probably went to the east at an angle towards Route 50 and eventually out to Black Walnut Creek that runs just outside of town. But that's, they're 100 years old, they're old clay tiles. There's been construction and roads, you know, redone. And I'm sure that, I don't think you'll ever get that to, to flow again. And, and besides that, that water, that those old, they're four inch tiles are never going to be enough to handle all the water up there now, especially with the homes and stuff like that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Can I make a point real quick? Sure. Be um, step up and give your name. Sure. Please. William Berkeley. I'm at 501 South Second Street. I'm on the east side of the street from these guys. I'm south and east of both of them. And I know that field tile comes down, crosses across, just south of Tommy Blog. You guys all know Mr. Blog. Um, and you can see the crack in the street where it's bubbling up, and that was my point here. It's not just, these guys are dealing with this sump issue constantly. My sump pump runs way too much. It does. But, you know, whatever. It's not nothing like what these people are dealing with. Um, but if you look at the street from the village perspective, you guys put in curb, I don't know, I've been there 25 years, 26 years, I think, and you guys put in new curb and uh, repaved Second Street years ago. There's sanitary sewer, there's no storm sewer because everything runs down the curb line around 50 and we all know that. My curb in front of my house is dropped at least two inches. The sidewalk in front of my, where my driveway is at is cracked and it's because of the standing water. I mean, you guys can drive by there anytime and take a look at from like say block south, south all the way to 50, you can see the damage that has been done on the east and west side of that street. So this is <coughs> affecting not just the homes and everybody that, that lives up and down that stretch, but it's affecting 
all of the infrastructure, the, the, the curb, the street, everything is being affected. I've got black tap just peeling off in front of my house. Um, you know, and I know that happens, and it's been a while since you guys did pay that. But I'm just saying this is causing other issues, and I know it's expensive. You said 50 grand to get a deal going just to, to figure out where these field tiles at. You can kind of get an idea just from standing out there. You can kind of see at least where it comes through that field, how it feels right through there, between their yards, and comes across to the east side. From there, and I don't know if, if I Googled it or, or whatever, but I thought I saw an old plot somewhere and it showed field tiles. So that might be a place to start. I don't know. I can even do it. I got time. Um, but what I'm saying is it is a field tile issue and they can't be fixed. Those issues, I mean, whatever, you're going to be chasing that forever. They're a hundred year old clay tile. Something needs to get done in order to get that drainage from that field out to Second Street, and then we don't have storm sewer anyway, so I don't know, you know. But if you look at all our mailboxes, are in the same spot, crossed on the west side of Second Street, and it's six feet of ice out in front of that mailbox right now. Um, what is it? It's not the uh, orchard. What's the street that's right across? Just that's it. I've only lived there one time. <laughs> um, that where the school bus stops. It's a skating range. It's 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 a mess, and it's like that all the way down to Route 50. So I mean, this is affecting everybody from that point south for sure. There's no doubt. And I know there was issues with other people to the north before when that farm field used to flood, and it affected everybody on the west side of Second Street. All those new homes. That, well, they're not new now, but they are me. Um, Everybody was affected by it. Now it's primarily just what three, four houses there on the west side that's really getting pounded. Mm -hmm. Three that are really for sure. Um, and then, it, but it does affect us on the east side also. Well, that, it that, does. that water goes all the way behind you guys' house, goes all the way down to the restaurant. Correct. Comes back around. Correct. To the be the north side of the restaurant, back to Second Street, down right. Second Street on the opposite side, dumps that's in the dish, and then goes back around. And see, that's what I say, that there's different broken segments, and I'm sure that there's some piece in there that's causing me to have as much water as I have. I mean, I've got dual sumps down there, they're pumping constantly and things like that. I don't have the problems they have. But from a village perspective, take a look at the sidewalk, take a look at the curb, take a look at the, the pavement out there. It's shot, and it's you know that's especially winter time. You guys know better than anybody. It's not going to get any better. So, but just my two cents. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Any other public comment? We shall move on to reports of committees. Old administrators report in your packet. Do you have anything to explain by that? No, I don't. All right. Uh, police chief's report. No police chief's report tonight. Engineers report. Um, the Corning Avenue Resurfacing Project, the IDOT, IDOT funded project, um, had a bid opening last week and the results were good. The estimate and the funding amount were 500000 mm -hmm. There were four bidders and the low bidder came in at right about 476000 so it came in about 24000 under the funding amount and um, estimate. So there's you know, a little room if you know, more things come up and you're not getting on the public floor, it's going to be covered part of the grant, so that's good news. Was still working on reviewing plans for the environment project on Corning as well. And then for the DCEO grant for the sidewalk corners, um, that will be going out to bid uh, later this week, and the bid opening is here for February 17th. Very good. Cool. All right, treasurer's reports also in your packets. No old business, move on to new business. Item A home occupation mm -hmm. permit application, R. Van Dyke. 405 North Glenview Lane, Finch and Flower Papery. Van Dyke's here. Go ahead. It, it, it's a home based uh, business. <coughs> um, these would get renewed every January, and I've reviewed the code and it looks in compliance. I have no uh, issues. 
selling art prints, greeting cards, mm -hmm. and other illustrated stationery items online. So Discussion? Not really it the right, no. Other than online. Correct. Right. <coughs> okay. I move we approve the permit application. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee March, seconded by Trustee Marufka to approve the home occupation permit application of Rachel Van Dyke. March. Yes. Marufka. Yes. Out. Yes. 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 Uh, item B: Resolution. A resolution to adopt the annual 1,000 hour standard for IMR, IMRF participation. And this will just uh, be in compliance with what we talked about with the personnel manual since we uh, changed it in there. We need to do this to be consistent with changing it in our personnel manual. Discussion? If not, uh, a motion to approve this would be resolution number 19 R15, a resolution to adopt the annual 1,000 hour standard for IMRF participation. Second? Second. Motion by Trustee Bowden, seconded by Trustee Ann. Bowden? Yes. Ham? Yes. Parker? Yes. March? Yes. Marika? Yes. All right. Item C, resignation of police officer Brian Frable. Uh, dear Chief, please accept this letter as notice of my resignation from my position as police officer, my last day of employment will be 2 2, two, two, two 2020. I received an offer to serve as a police officer for the Beecher Police Department, and after careful consideration, I realized that this opportunity is too exciting for me to decline. It's been a pleasure working with you and your police department over the last five years, etc., etc. So, motion to accept the resignation of police officer Brian Craven. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee Marupka, seconded by Trustee Park. Marupka? <coughs> yes. Yes. Parker? Yes. Jan? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Mark? Yes. Item D, ordinances. Number one, an ordinance repealing a special use 201 North 2nd Street. So the uh, plan commission held a uh, meeting on January 22nd and consider the repeal of a special use ordinance on the property at 201 South 2nd Street. Um, they voted to recommend that repeal with a unanimous vote. Um, so if you recall, um, uh, they before you at your last board meeting, um, Don uh, was here at, with me uh, contracting and he um, purchased this property, so uh, this special use uh, followed the land, and it was a special use on uh, property that would allow a automotive repair business and on the bottom floor and an apartment on the top floor, and then there would be a restaurant in the front of the building, a little former Napa building. And um, so he would like that repealed, and then his vision for the future on that property would be an office on the top and um, the some storage on the bottom, which is allowable, in B1, which is the current zoning. And then uh, he would return uh, later uh, for a commercial use in the uh, tear down the front, and a commercial building would be rebuilt there. And, um, <coughs> Perhaps some um, apartment, an apartment on top, which would require a uh, special use. So he would he would come back to the planning and zoning for that in the future. Um, so that's what this ordinance. This ordinance is just a repeal, though, of that current special use that is on that property. It's been attached to it. Correct. Discussion. If not, a motion to adopt ordinance number nineteen dash forty seven. An ordinance repealing a special use 201 Second Street. Motion. Second? Second. Motion by Trustee Bowden, seconded by Trustee Parker. Bowden? Yes. <coughs> Parker? Yes. Ham? Yes. March? Yes. Marip? Yes. Great. Uh, an ordinance amending Title IX, Chapter 112, Section 112.19 of the Code of Piatone regarding the number of liquor licenses. 
Well, we have a, a, a request for um, a liquor license so from Del Carmen Restaurant. They are here to talk to you about that, but before um, we can issue that, we need to create one. So we thought this would be a good order. On the agenda for you. And this is a class yes. E. So we're going from three to four. Is that correct? So I don't know if you want to hear from them first. Yeah, I said, why don't we do that? Why don't we get a, an idea of where we're going? Hi, folks. Hi, I'm Evelyn Gonkin. Hi, I'm Evelyn Gonkin. Hello, how are you? Very good, thank you. Good. So currently we. Um, own a few restaurants further, uh, about half an hour north from here. Um, we have four of them, one of them um, it has a liquor license, and then we also have, in the same location that has a liquor license, also have gaming in there, and the town is be very helpful. <laughs> so we're trying to have like the same thing. So they're looking at the uh, the former Mexican restaurant that's near Burkhaus so out on Harlem Avenue. It's been sitting empty for a little while, mm -hmm. and um, so they're uh, leasing that from the owner, uh, who's, who's an investment uh, company, basically. Um, but uh, where exactly are you? Have four other restaurants, and you've been in business for uh, about eleven years or so. Uh, Twelve. 12, and you have uh, so four restaurants in four. one in Worth and, and Bridgeview, Westbourne, and uh, Urban. Okay, so um, you know, a great track record. You've been in business a long time, and um, I'm, any, I'm excited about a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <I know. laughs> my, right. my stomach's growling. So. <laughs> You're, you're, you're an LLC? That's a family member owner. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're all family owned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like a corporation right. or something. You know. uh, um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a franchise. Okay. Not, yeah. but, but I just say that only because we, we can't give out liquor licenses to sole proprietorships. Right. So, but, so just for purposes of a liquor license, you, you are listed on the Secretary of State's website as a corporation, mm -hmm. but your family-owned business, so mm -hmm. thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> they have a good rating on, uh, they're not necessarily rated, but they don't have any complaints on the Better Business Bureau, just for your acknowledgement. The, the police chief did do a background check on them, and we'll see any issues with them as a, a company or uh, any issues. And their food gets good reviews on there you go. They have. They actually have <coughs> the property, and uh, I think I don't know that you pulled a permit yet, but they they're looking to do what you want to do is sign. Oh, permit like to yeah yeah. Um, they, yeah, yeah we're yeah, working. We're working on it. Um, I I think the um account when she came in. That was part of what she was doing. But she pulled the the, the oh, paperwork, oh, no. but we haven't but we, okay. we haven't gotten it back yet from you. But okay. um, they're eligible for six um, uh, gaming machines based on the current legislation. Right. But that's something they do themselves <coughs> through the state. Correct. We have nothing to do with that. Right. And your attention is still right. We would need the gaming license. license. Your other ones. Yes. Okay. Still. Primarily. I mean, same same menu, everything. Um, you know, same food and everything. I'm going to keep it the same since we've been successful with it here. <laughs> what do you hope to open? Um, hopefully March. So how about um, your hours of operation? Was that, I don't know what you're about. Monday through Saturday. Um, what we put there was kind of just, um, we weren't sure the hours, so we just put a big time frame to see what you would approve, and then we can decide from there whatever you, you, know, you approve. But really, we were thinking maybe like 9 to 11. But Which would be, yeah, I mean, that fits well within the norm. Oh, yeah. my God. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then you would adjust that as you see fit, I think, as you go forward. Any other questions from the trustees? 
So I, the first thing we do then is we would uh, motion to adopt ordinance number 19-48 and ordinance amending title 9 <coughs> chapter 112 section 112.19 of the code of Piatone regarding the number of liquor licenses increasing the number of licenses in the class E to 4. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee March, seconded by Trustee Morafka. <coughs> March? Yes. Marifka? Yes. Albert? Yes. Pam? Yes. Park. Yes. And then we have the application for business registration. Should we do that separately? I guess. Yes. Yeah, separate motions. So a motion to approve the application for business registration for Del Carmen restaurants at 314 South Harlem Street. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee Marifka, seconded by Trustee Parker. Marifka? Yes. Parker? Yes. Pam? Yes. Bowden? Yes. March? Yes. And then we have an application <coughs> from Del Carmen Restaurants for a Class E liquor license, which is now available by ordinance. <laughs> a motion to approve that application. Motion. Second. Motion by Trustee Ham, seconded by Trustee Marefka. Ham? Yes. Marefka? Yes. Parker? Yes. Bowden? Yes. March? Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. Welcome. Thank Welcome you. to the yeah. 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 We're very exactly. excited. Good luck. Nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, see you soon. we'll see you soon. Yes, yes definitely. definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number two, Jim Williams, Cornerstone Coffee House, 124 West Main Street. Come on up, Jim. No liquor license? No, no liquor license. <laughs> Nothing in the coffee? Coffees. No. <laughs> we're going to keep it uh, more of a family. <laughs> cool. Very good. Y'all tell us about it. Uh, well, there's really not a whole lot to tell other than uh, I've been retired for a few years and I'm looking for something to do. I bought the property on the on, uh, you know 124 West Main, which includes the dance studio, and a uh, little disappointed in the way Main Street looks, and that seems to be changing now in the last you know several months. So we're going to have uh, got some activity going. Hopefully, on. a lot of traffic on Main Street and. Uh, my wife and I would like to do the coffee shop, and uh, I gave kind of a sample menu mm -hmm. to, to Amy, and it's, of course, nothing's written in stone, but uh, my wife is the driver on some of this stuff where um, <coughs> we want a little bit higher grade of things, you know, we want to have Coke and Pepsi, we want more natural and organic wherever we can, and uh, Fair trade coffee and tea, baked goods, which we're, uh, we've been talking to uh, to Whisk Bakery in Mantino to offer some baked goods. Hopefully, if things go well, we don't want to take on too much right at the very beginning, but uh, we'd like to maybe have deli meat. You know, uh, we want to go maybe do as much as we can and stay under that full kitchen. You know, I just, you know, I did retire a few years ago. I don't want to, don't want to take on too much. But, uh, yeah, community-based, family-based, you know, and, and we really see a lot of nice things happening. My, uh, we're in Moni, but my son and daughter-in-law and two grandkids are in Piatone. And uh, when I was tearing walls down and ceilings and stuff, I'd see all the families walking up and down the, the street and we'd give them a place to stop, you know. Yeah. We, we think it'd be a good deal with the, the dance studio right behind us there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of, you know, customer yeah. base built yeah. in. So, uh, I might wander down the street a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Just bring your shovel. Yeah. Man, okay? <laughs> I did. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. um, really, I, I didn't really prepare anything. I, no, I no, just figured I'd be here. Appreciate it. If you have questions. The, you know, so we're, it's going to be again, a sit down with tables and chairs? And yeah. Yeah, we, we want it to be very comfortable, um, kind of homey, you know, maybe like a community table or a sofa or something like that. What do you think you're open? 
Pardon me? When do you think you'll open? That, that's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing this all out of, uh, out of my own funds. Uh -huh. um, and I, finding out, you know, I was in the electric uh, uh, ComEd, NRG, uh, Midwest Generation, and all the power plants. So this is all very new to me, and I'm finding it's hard to keep people working for me. <laughs> you know, I, I lost uh, uh, my nephew who was a, uh, did the framing for me, and he just kind of disappeared off the map. And, uh, uh, electrician, I, I'm just hired my third electrician to get the work done. So we've, we've hit a couple of bumps. But uh, we were hoping for March, April, something like that. Um, I hope I can still make that. But um, that's, we're, looking, we're looking forward to it. That's, yes. that's yes. our plan. And we're really looking forward to just, you know, just being a part of the community. Yeah. And, and we appreciate it. We're excited yeah. about it. Yeah. Been talking about it for a while. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. and that's that's kind of why I'm here because a lot of people are asking questions. Yeah. And, and no, I think it's good. And, uh, I think it's good. That and and again, I see all this movement in town, and I wanted to make sure I get my foot in the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Any other questions from the trustees? All right. If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve the application for business registration for Cornerstone Coffee House, Jim Williams. Second. Motion by Trustee Marufka, seconded by Trustee Parker. Marufka? Yes. Parker? Yes. Ham? Yes. Allen? Yes. Mark? Yes. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thanks so much for your time. Good luck. you. I just want to let you all know that if it's a, I hope I'm not going to talk out of school on each other. Uh-oh. <laughs> we, uh, we are in the negotiations with Jim, or we're about to be on a tip the development agreement on his on his property as he says that he's doing this out of his pocket but he is in the tip district and so even though we don't have a lot of funds in the tip yet in the downtown tip we do want to enter into a redevelopment agreement with him and so that you know we we hope to that he will be our first uh downtown redevelopment agreement and that you know we hope that it will it will help mm -hmm. him, and and so we put some Definitely, numbers yeah. together with the EDG group, and um, we're going to schedule a conference call with him and go over that, and you know maybe it won't help him at this moment, but down the road, down the road so that mm -hmm. he can you know sustain what he's going to mm -hmm. create and possibly help him grow in the future. So um, just want want y'all to know that so that whenever you get a redevelopment agreement, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. you yeah, Amy and I had a fifteen minute. Um, meeting that lasted about two and a half hours. <laughs> we talked about a lot of good stuff. You know what I mean? If I could get my parking lot in better shape, I'd like to do a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, open the parking lot up to the village to do. We, we talked about bringing the farmer's market back, possibly. Yeah. I know there's residential across the street, across the first street, so I don't know if you could do that, but uh, I'd like to do a food truck event. And I, I really want to be part of this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yes. Good luck yes. to you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Questions of the press? No press. Correspondence, communications, petitions. Um, just to go back up to your, you have your treasurer's report in your packet. Uh -huh. Yes. Then I think uh, if you're due for your quarterly report, treasurer's report. So, uh, Marcia, you said you, you should have that by the end of the week. It'll be in your box. So, just be ready. Right. Did we get a date scheduled for the uh, the budget? The CIP? Yes. Yes. Uh, 29th. 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 I think they changed it. Yeah, oh. it'll be the 29th. So let me send out a, another email on that if I didn't send you all an email on that. Thank you, folks. Yeah. No, because you said you were going to check to see. Okay, so it's the 29th. I just wrote it down. At 8 a.m. 29th at 8 a.m., 8 to 10 here. She's bringing donuts. With coffee She's and donuts. Sure. I remember that. <laughs> what was the AOC meeting after that? You know, that schedule, right? Yes. That'll Did be. you ever contact? you guys know about that meeting? At the 20... 29th? No. It was in March, right? Yes. It was after that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I'll 
I'll send it on. <coughs> I'll it send is March 4th. It. I mean, it's not even on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an email that was set up. It's at 5.30, I know that. Yeah, part like four. I have that on my calendar. Okay. Anything else from the board? Not a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee March, second by Trustee Marathka. March. Yes. Marefka? Yes. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Oh.